Now, when I first saw this listing on BU Blasters, I was really excited because it truly looks like a sci-fi, really neat looking blaster that really screams the Dr. Flux aesthetic. And I was even more blown away when BU Blasters reached out and said, hey, would you like to review one of these? I said, sure, send it on over. And then I received the blaster, got it in my hands, and that's when things kind of changed. So in today's video, we're gonna do a full rundown as to all the good things of this blaster, all the not so good things, and give an overall impression to see whether or not this blaster is worth your time and money. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's video. So the first thing is let's talk about what comes in the package. We have the blaster, we have a couple packs of these darts. These are 10 darts a piece. These are the suction cup darts. And it's worth noting, these things are not your standard size Nerf dart, nor are they a short dart. They're kind of in between. So that's, that's interesting. We'll talk more about that later. Comes with a magazine right here that is actually double stacked. This is a very unique thing also because typically double stacked Nerf darts don't really work well, so very interested in seeing how this performs. One magazine for one blaster, really wish it came with a couple, and the power source is this little guy. This is a USB chargeable 7.4 volt battery, and seems to have actually some pretty good performance behind it. On the side of the blaster, there's this on-off selector knob thing, and this is where things started getting not so great. Now, as we were testing here in the studio, one of our blaster techs actually accidentally broke it. Uh, you can see how it just spins now, and you hear a little piece of plastic in there. So that's unfortunate. I did reach out to BU Blasters and said, hey, you know, we had issues with this one, and they promptly sent out another blaster. It seems like they have good customer service. Now, keep in mind, this is a blaster that was sent in. We didn't purchase it, so that, that has to be said. Now, the next blaster they sent was the gray version. That first one was the brown one, so there's two color variants. Uh, as you can see, I threw some extra attachments on here. So yes, we do have an in-strike barrel lug on the front. We have what can appear to be Picatinny on the bottom and the top. This right here is from a Dart Zone product. But as you can see, pretty cool. Now, it is worth noting, this lock right here doesn't go all the way. So it's actually kind of at an angle, so that's kind of annoying. Now let's take a moment to talk about the stock because the stock was uh, something that also made me kind of a little bit concerned. When I first grabbed it, you could see real quick, it's got a lot of flex in it. It's not the most high quality plastic they used for this. You can see that you instinctively want to grab these buttons on the side to extend the stock, but that's not how it works. Oh look, it does come out too. Uh, this button on the bottom is how you basically change the positions of the stock. I think it would have been better if they opted with just, you know, maybe a buffer tube or something other than this collapsible stock. It's just, uh, in theory, it sounds good. I think if they used metal rods on this, it would have been better, but currently I'm just not a big fan of it. Also, when it's completely closed, it has a tendency to kind of dig into my hand right here. I understand this is a kid's toy, but this is kind of a full-size adult grip, but yet this thing is not given enough room back here, so worth mentioning. And I wanna take a moment to say thank you to today's video sponsor, EBL. The reason why Dr. Flux and Flux Labs and all this even exists is because way back in the day, I found a Nemesis at my local thrift store. So I took the Nemesis and I took it home and opened it up and realized, wow, this thing takes six D batteries. Okay, cool, sure. So I went over to Walmart or my local box store, grabbed six D batteries, threw them in my Nemesis, also grabbed a pack of rival rounds and had a blast with this thing. You know, just running around the house, just like, I just couldn't get over how cool Nerf had gotten since I was a kid. And so obviously, you know, after a day of just playing with this thing, and letting the kids play with it and everything, the batteries ran out. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, that was fun, but I just spent, you know, I swear, it must have been like 20 bucks or something. It, it was a bit. And I'm like, wow, well, that's unfortunate. So I immediately turned to YouTube 
and started looking at, is there any way, what, is there like a good rechargeable battery or should I rewire this? Is there a way to rewire it for you know something that is rechargeable? And that's what got me into Nerf modding. Now, why is this so important? Because EBL offers rechargeable batteries. So they are now the Dr. Flux, Flux Labs official battery sponsor, which is awesome. So all those thrifted blasters we get, you know, the rapid strikes, which I believe take C batteries or the strife, which is double A, or even, you know, some of the bigger guys like the, uh, like the hyperfire, you know, the hyperfire, which actually takes four D batteries. So now we're able to basically have an endless supply of batteries to keep the blasters going. Now, if you would like to support the Dr. Flux channel and also get some good, dependable, reliable batteries for an affordable price, use the link in the description for EBL. Thank you. Now let's talk about where this blaster shines. Like I mentioned before, it is a double stack magazine. So you have a high capacity 20 dart magazine. That's actually really amazing. And the performance of it is pretty solid as well. As we can see from these numbers here, this blaster is pretty spicy. It's hitting over 100 FPS, which I actually didn't expect for it to do. So that's really cool, especially off that little battery. It also has a very fast rate of fire. You can see this thing can dump this entire 20 dart capacity magazine very quickly. It just makes you really wish that it came with more than one magazine. And fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know how to look at it, uh, because the other one broke, now I actually have two magazines so I can actually use a magazine as it's intended and swap it out with another one that's full. I never understand when blaster companies or Nerf or Hasbro or whoever releases a product with one magazine because you know, what's the point of a magazine if I have to pull it out, reload that one magazine on the fly and then put it back in, that's way too slow. You might as well just have a cylinder or something. On the top of the blaster, we have a jam door here. If you have any jams, you can access from here. Keep in mind, the jam door is a little bit flimsy. As we can see here, we have a rev trigger. We have the regular trigger and then of course the magazine release. It's all kind of in this compact little trigger group here, which I really like. I think that's a really nice feature to be able to go from, you know, rev, fire, and then also eject. Also, it does not free fall, so that's unfortunate, but at least it's in a good spot. So in the end, can I recommend the BU Blasters Sci-Fi Foam Dart Launcher? I'd say it looks great. If you're looking for this aesthetic, sure. I think it's a little spendy at 40 US dollars and uh, kind of a long wait, you know, for stuff coming to the United States from China or wherever this comes from. So keep that in mind. There are a lot better offerings out there. Uh, one of my biggest gripes with this is it's not really compatible with any kind of dart except for this weird shaped dart. So, I mean, it's kind of hard for me to recommend something like this when people are using talons or even full length darts. It kind of falls in a weird, its own ecosystem. So, you know, and it, yeah, it's hard. But if you're looking for this type of look or this aesthetic, and maybe this is gonna complement a cosplay or a build that you're looking to do, then I can get behind it. Me personally, I think I would have to redo this mag well to accept Talon mags. I think then it would actually be pretty good. I did try putting short darts in here. I just didn't have good at, good performance with it. Kind of, the darts kind of, kind of, fell out of the blasters. So what would need to happen is the pusher arm would have to be extended a little bit. And then of course the magwell would have to change. And I don't know, it, it's it's to the point where it's like too much work to justify, you know, something that you spend $40 on. So take that for what it's worth. I do want to thank BU Blasters for sending this in. Unfortunately, it's not the best blaster I've ever got my hands on. Definitely looks super cool. I would say if I were to go into my local Walmart or big box store, the stuff that is, you know, offered by Hasbro nowadays, I think this thing's actually a little bit better. Uh, the plastic quality of a Hasbro product is far, far better than this, but the overall fun that we had with this, you know, for that, I mean, I, I'd have to say it's definitely a positive. Also, $40 for a Hasbro product won't really get you much, but it is something to consider. Well, I'm Dr. Flux. I want to thank you for watching today's video. If you haven't done so already, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that notification bell so you can see when we make new content. As always, be safe and happy foam flinging. Mm -hmm.